Meantime, newly released figures show a 40-year high in the rate of inflation. The Labor Department numbers show consumer prices jumped 7.5 percent last month compared to the 12 months earlier. That is the lowest year-over-year -year increase since 1982. This weekend, I, uh, the highest increase. This weekend, I spoke with Mark Goldwine to help us understand these record-breaking numbers. He is the senior vice president at the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Mark, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So let's begin with the Federal Reserve expected to raise interest rates next month. What are the pros and the cons? Well, look, inflation is, is out of control right now. We're talking about 7% over the, over the last 12 months by CPI. And so the Federal Reserve is going to have to get us out of this zero interest rate environment. The question is how fast. If they move too quickly, they could undermine the recovery and even turn us around to double dip recession. If they move too slowly, we may see further acceleration of inflation. So how do you think it's going? We, we don't know. We have to wait and see how quickly it moves. Well, look, they haven't even started yet. Um, so they haven't even finished their quantitative easing where they're buying bonds. They're probably going to finish that this month. Then they're going to raise rates either a quarter or a half point next month. And then they're going to keep watching. And my guess is they raise rates every couple of months until inflation starts to starts to get under control. So the president said things should start to taper off as we go through the year. That seems like a very carefully worded answer, a safe answer. When do you see relief coming? Uh, I think it's going to be a while before we're back to that 2% inflation. Um, I, don't, I don't think we're going to get 7% in 2022, but my guess is it's not until 2023, 2024, maybe even 2025 or later before we're back to the 2% inflation that we've been used to. So inflation is showing up. It's not just on sh store shelves. It's also in services and housing. What areas are we likely to see improve first? It, it, it's hard to say. And what shows up in the, in the data may not be the same as what shows up in your pocketbook because of, of measurement issues. Um, but you would expect as interest rates go up, the first thing we would start to see is housing prices stop to rise so quickly. Hopefully, this happens coincided with, with food prices getting under control. Um, and supply chains started to regulate themselves. But that's not really going to be because of the interest rates. What the interest rate increases will do is stop that from bleeding so much into other areas of the economy. So what should we expect in the housing market? Because it's been a seller's market for, for quite a while. Uh, yeah, don't, don't make any, any sales or purchases based on what I'm going to tell you. But as interest <laughs> rates rise, we should expect at, at least the growth pace of prices is going to slow. And maybe we will see some, some decline. And that's probably healthy because while rising home prices are, are great for homeowners, it makes it really hard to buy a new home. And there are so many people who are were hoping to be first-time home buyers who just got outbid, and and uh, people were paying cash and paying above asking price over the last year or so for houses. Uh, it's a it's a really tight market, and part of that is is the inflation, part of the interest rates, part is change in preferences with with COVID. Uh, hopefully, that is not going to solve itself. We're still going to have a tight market, but hopefully at least the price growth is going to slow as interest rates start to go up. All right, Mark, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.